Hey, what's up everybody? This is Muth24, and today I'm going to take a look at the Doctor Strange graphic novel from the Marvel Season 1 collection. Uh, I do apologize, I still have the thing in my mouth. Uh, this probably should be the last video where I actually record with that in, uh, and it'll be uploaded by the time I get it pulled out anyway. So, um, should be good after this. Back to sounding normal. Um, but, this graphic novel, much like the other Season 1 releases, if people aren't familiar, is sort of a modern retelling of these characters' origins. They're, they're Silver Age and Golden Age uh, appearances updated for newer audiences. Now, I mentioned before the Ant-Man one, they did sort of this weird combination of sort of Silver Age dialogue where Ant-Man's saying a lot of the things that he's doing and um, putting that in a newer scenario with, like, dropping social media names and updating all the cards and stuff, even though the characters are designed very much like they were back in the olden days of comic books. Um, here, I feel like they did a better job of maintaining the identity of the character from, and, and the storyline as well, from the original version, but doing it in a way that you can sort of transcend uh, the period that it's taken place in. The Doctor Strange story is one that I'm sort of familiar with, but I've never really read a lot of Doctor Strange stuff. I feel like this telling of the origin story of Doctor Strange, at least, is one that you can read and have it take place in just about any time period. Some of the clothing options and some of the backgrounds and all that seem to be updated more for a modern audience. And so to that, and I can kind of see how they were trying to make it appeal to new school readers, but at the same time, like I never felt that they were nailing it down to a certain time period. And I really appreciate that, and I kind of hope they take that sort of direction with the film. Um, obviously, all the Marvel stuff is taking place in sort of the modern day setting, but with Doctor Strange, he's sort of out in these mountains, up in this uh, monastery all by himself with a handful of other, you know, um, spiritual, magical type people. Um, but for the most part, he's sort of isolated from society in the beginning there. And I, I think that will work really well uh, if they stick to that sort of uh, adaptation for the the graph or for the film. And it worked really well for this graphic novel. So the cover here, very simply stated, a lot of the covers are pretty just pretty much just the character themselves here on the front. Um, but I do like the pose there with the sort of magic circles around his hand and sort of the billowing wind around his cape and all that. On the back, we have a little... Uh, little indication of what's going on in the story and uh, a little tease of the art style. I really like the art style in this one, um, more so than in Ant-Man. Ant-Man was sort of just simple, wasn't too uh, adventurous in uh, direction. Uh, in this, it's very sort of clashing with the colors, but I like it. it, it the environments are either super bright and orange and yellow, as you can see there, or very dark with cool colors, blues, purples, um, some greens there, and I really like the sort of extreme directions they take with that. It also works really well when they're doing sort of the, the magic elements and uh, all that jazz. I like the fact that the uh, outlines are very thick in some places and very sort of loose and flowing in others. I think it does well for, again, that sort of um, magic and mysticism element that's going on in this comic, as opposed to the superhero antics of a lot of the other uh, Marvel heroes. I think that uh, Doctor Strange is kind of a fun character, uh, especially in this version, since he's not exactly the uh, most noble character, at least not at the outset here. Um, his goals are, are well enough, but um, the way that he goes about them, he's kind of kind of a schemer, kind of plays uh, things to his advantage, and I suppose he kind of has to, considering that his hands uh, are broken and he can't use them for his... Um, his surgery that he was so well known for uh, anymore. He has to uh, resort to going to this group of uh, sort of isolated guys, like I mentioned, and uh, seeing if they can help heal him, which ends up resulting in him being able to uh, call upon these uh, mystical elements. They also do a good job of sort of teasing other things in the Doctor Strange storyline, like they name dropped Ormamu, and a couple other characters show up that. Uh, I would have to imagine play a bigger role in later Doctor Strange stories. Uh, like I said, I'm not super uh, knowledgeable about Doctor Strange, um, but I like the fact that this story is very much self-contained, but at the same time does leave enough to sort of spin off into other storylines if it wanted to. And I almost wish that the follow-up story had been just a Doctor Strange story to give me more appreciation for that fact. Um, but what they put in the back here is a Defender story, and I know that's one of Doctor Strange's team's Later on in the Marvel comics, you know, you got the Avengers with Captain America and all that, uh, and then Doctor Strange and a few other characters form the Defenders. 
Um, obviously, we have a very much new school sort of current era Marvel art style for for this issue. Uh, reminds me a lot of the style I used for the Venom comics and uh, for some of the Guardians of the Galaxy stuff. Um, it's an entertaining enough story, but it's all set up. And it's sort of the same problem that I have with the story they put in the back of the uh, Ant-Man Season 1, where it's like, this is setting up for some other story in the hopes that you will go out and buy whatever uh, storyline they are, they are writing there. And for me, it was like, well, this is cool to see all these other characters, but Doctor Strange doesn't do a whole lot in this uh, follow-up, so that was a little disappointing. Um, we do get some character catches here in the back, which I really like. You know, some of the clothing design, you see all the different outfits they wear throughout the comics. Um, it may be a little bit more detail here, even though they're black and white, um, because there's not so much chaotic action going on there. So it's kind of appreciated to get some outlines there of the, or early sketches rather, of the uh, environments and all that. Um, some artwork again of the sort of mystical elements, and then a ad in the back here for some other Season 1 collections. Fantastic Four, X-Men, Daredevil, Spider-Man, uh, Ant-Man, Hulk, and then, oddly enough, Doctor Strange is advertised in his own uh, comic book here. But uh, as far as recommendation goes, I definitely think this is a really good uh, telling of the Doctor Strange story. I really appreciate it. Like I said, I like the fact that it's not tethered to a specific time and place in the Marvel Universe. I, I like the fact that you could kind of... Uh, Take it as you want. It, it could be either that this is taking place back in the Silver Age, or this is a you know newer newer version of the Doctor Strange story for a younger audience. Um, I really like the fact that the art style is so distinct. It definitely makes it stand out uh, among the sort of retellings of the classic Avengers and uh, Marvel character stories that I have. Um, I think as a whole, it's significantly better than the Ant Man story. Although again, the Defender story in the back is just kind of was throw away from me. I didn't really care that much about it because it didn't give me much to care about, right? It was all set up for something else. And I understand that they got to do that sometimes with selling more issues of, of newer stuff. They want to uh, kind of engage readers. But for me, it w there was no real story to get engaged in there because, it, like I said, it was all set up. There, we didn't know that much about what was going to happen in that Defender story. Um, so, for that, if you're, if you're getting it for both that and the next story, um, I think you're going to just appreciate the Doctor Strange story a lot more. But if you're getting it mainly for the Doctor Strange Season 1 telling, which I imagine most people are, uh, I definitely recommend this. I think it's a really cool, uh, really well done adaptation of the Doctor Strange story. And it makes me excited to see what uh, what they're going to do with him in the film. Uh, and sort of makes me want to read some more of Doctor Strange himself. So uh, that's pretty much it for this review. And with that, I will see you guys next time.